How, how's it all going? How are you guys doing? Thanks very much for coming and for having me here. It's amazing. Um, all right, so yeah, my name is John Bergman. Uh, so this month's theme is craft. We're going to talk a little bit about craft. What is craft? Craft is an activity involving skills, making things by hand. OK, that's craft. Um, I'm not really sure I'm down with craft that much. I'm a little bit anti-craft. I think we should switch out skills for ideas. And by hand, like making stuff by hand is really cool and really good, but it doesn't have to be by hand. I think we should switch out to by any means um, possible. I would choose graft over craft. Um, do you know that term? You know graft? You know that those were okay. So it's a it's it's a, it's a, just about making stuff. Make the work. Do the work. Hard work is graft. That's a British term. I am British. Um, <laughs> this is what British men text each other. Um, I'm quite anxious, and I like yellow jackets. Um, this is me and my friend on the subway platform in our yellow jackets. Except it's not really my friend, it's just some guy I was stood next to. <laughs> and I just tried to get one extra photo of him, and then he turned, out, uh, turned around. One day I'm going to show this slide, and he's going to be in the audience, and he'll probably hit me. Um, I'm an artist, but I like to tell people I'm a doodler, because people go, what on earth is a doodler? Um, and for me, doodling isn't necessarily just filling up a page with a little pattern or something. It's, it's more, it means something uh, more to me than just, just sort of decorative uh, pattern filling. What is a doodle exactly? A doodle is when you're making something intuitively, and you're not quite sure what it's going to be, but you, you feel good about what it is you're doing. And then it could be you know, a day later or hundreds of years later, you're like, that's what it was. That's <laughs> something clicks. The thing clicks, and it becomes the thing. You know, you can be doodling when you're waiting for your food in a restaurant. You could doodle little characters. You could doodle on a big piece of paper. You could doodle on a big wall. You could doodle an installation. You could doodle on a rooftop in Bushwick. You could doodle a subway station in Seoul. You could doodle blobs. Yeah, it feels good making blobs. Let's do some blobs. And then, oh, it's a woman holding a cat. Um, <laughs> You're not, you're not always sure what it is you're doing. I'm not always sure what it is I'm doing. That is a poodle. Um, <laughs> you can doodle balloons. You could doodle on a car. You could doodle on an object. You could doodle on your laptop. You could doodle a yellow jacket. You could, a doodle can become anything. It can become a tattoo. You could doodle a portrait of your brother on a hard-boiled egg <laughs> when he's not in a good mood with you. You could doodle poop, you could doodle on trash, you could reappropriate an old piece of fruit into a basketball, you could doodle with your breakfast, those are noodles. Uh, you could doodle with a leaf that you find in Central Park, you doodle with foam, you could doodle with sound. Doodle doesn't have to be a drawing, doesn't have to be just an image, it could just be a noise, it could be a melody, it's just it's playing around with something. Um, you could doodle with your body, you could doodle a dance. You could doodle some sort of weird motion tracking doodling thing that you never quite finished. That is a strudel. <laughs> so doodling, for me, is thinking and making at the same time. So this is a really um, like clear example of that. Uh, I am drawing, but I'm, I don't really know what I'm drawing. I'm just, I'm just thinking and drawing at the same time. And I have a, a vague idea of, of what it is I'm going to make, but I'm not entirely sure how that's going to pan out. And I'm discovering it as I do it. Uh, this one in the, in the lower left corner is in a noodle shop, so that's why I'm doodling noodles. Um, makes sense. So a doodle pretty much is a quick, fun idea. Mr. Knows, Mr. Knows, where he goes, nobody knows. Oh. So um, people often say, what, really? You doodle for a living? Is that really a thing? So I thought I would just sort of show you sort of how I, because you, you, know, you might be thinking the same thing, how I might make my living. So this is a kind of, I've never done this before. This, I would say this whole pie is like my entire arts practice. And these are the segments, these are the pieces that make it up, that allows me not to have a real job. So I have to do a little bit of everything. And I, don't re and I couldn't survive on any one uh, segment on its own. Um, but there you go. So some of, some of it's traditional art stuff, some of it's commercial stuff, some of it's teaching and all this kind of thing. So you can, like, because people often, how do you survive as an artist? And I, I really don't know. Um, 
So that's a little nod to that. Here's some of the uh, examples of the commercial stuff that I do. I did a big video wall animation thing for Apple. Um, they were in their stores, which was super cool, and that led to being in an Apple advert for like a split second. Uh, there I am pretending to give a workshop. Um, <laughs> I've had my work on lots of products and things. I like to say that I haven't sold my soul, merely licensed it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but you, the, the, you can put an image on kind of anything from fabrics to apparel. I've done character designs and things for festivals and events, which is super cool. Um, shopping centers, department stores all over the place. My characters have been turned into toys. I have exhibitions. I do live paintings. I do uh, murals and things. That's a giant hot dog. Um, and yeah, talks and stuff like that. I've recently started making picture books, so if anyone has any children and stuff and they want to show them some funny books, these things are good, um, which is interesting. So a little bit of everything, and of course, flower beds. So <laughs> the, whole, the whole gamut of stuff. Um, what is my craft uh, if it's not dedicating myself to making things really beautifully? I'd say it's more of a creative uh, craft. I made this book last year, and it kind of brings together the last six, seven years of my practice, where I kind of abandoned craft or trying to be good at anything, and I just tried to make work that was uh, engaging and interesting and uh, creative by any means possible. And the idea of this book is that it's um, a, a, like a 101 exercises that anyone can do. You don't need any artistic talent or skill to do these things. Um, and they're really fun, and hopefully they'll start you on a little creative journey of your own. And I think that's like part of my craft. If, uh, I wouldn't really call it a craft, but that's kind of what, what I'm into. Um, so why is it gr great to create? The title of that book. Because uh, it's enjoyable, it's fun making stuff. You know, start with nothing, end up with something else. You know, that's kind of exciting. Uh, I think just being like creative uh, opens up new ideas, exercises our brain, it makes us feel good, which is really important. And we know exercising uh, our bodies makes us feel good, but exercising our brains creatively does a similar thing. Um, what do you need to be creative? You know, you, all right, yeah, John, great. Being creative is good. What do, we, what do you actually need? Uh, I don't think you need any particular material things. This is my sort of long list of like, things I was trying to think of that like, oh, what do you need? What, what, what are the real you know, core things? And I whittled it down to restrictions and time. Those are the only things you really need. Restrictions of whatever you have, using whatever you have, is important. So you have something to push against. And then time sounds a bit obvious to say, but you just need a little bit of time to be creative. Like It could be five minutes, it could be a whole day, but you need to say, this is a period of time in which I'm going to try and make something. If you don't do that, then how can you find that, you know, how are you going to make anything? So give yourself a moment to be creative. For me, that time is when I'm on the subway, or it has been. Um, so when I'm on the subway, I'm a bit bored, there's not much to do, and I'm like, I'm going to try and make something. So that's the time, and the restriction is I'm only going to use what I have to hand. Uh, this all started for me a few years ago when I was in South Korea, in Seoul, when I was traveling on the subway there, and uh, everyone's on their phones, and I thought, all right, I'm going to try and you know, use my time creatively. Uh, so I decided... <laughs> I would give people bodies. Um, so the re you know, restriction is pen, paper, and taking a photograph, and um, whoever sat opposite me, and I would try and give them a new body, um, and maybe they would leave before I got the photo. And that was like a fun little game <laughs> that I put together, uh, which totally opened my mind to all these new opportunities. I always thought to be creative, you have to have a little white canvas or p paper, and then I'm going to do it. But now you can, oh, wow, you could make stuff just out and about. It doesn't have to be what I normally make. It can be something new. And I thought, like, the more creative you try to be, the more creative you will be. Uh, it's just like seeing those opportunities. On the same trip, I saw this poster for a movie. I think it's a Die Hard movie. And I thought it, it would be hilarious if I lay down next to the poster, got a photo, added some Photoshop blood. It would look like the po poster has shot me. I never made work like that before. Normally, I have to do drawings and things. So uh, when I came back to New York, um, <laughs> I saw there was a lot more of these, these posters. And um, I started to collect them. Sorry if this is a little gruesome for like an early morning thing. But anyway. <laughs> 
So it started off as a goof, right? I'm just playing around. Oh, look, there's some more of these posters. I'll take some more pictures. Isn't this hilarious? I'm getting killed on a regular basis. Um, and these are very much like doodles. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I'm just like putting them together. And once I, once I had a bunch, once I had a, a, a hobbit or something kill me, I thought, OK, I'll put them on online. And I shared them with one friend. And then it kind of went viral. And uh, it got written about in lots of different places and sort of, sort of newspapers and stuff. And um, it was really interesting, because what started off as a bit of a gag and just a, a playful, creative exercise had developed into a sort of serious project where you know, I was being interviewed about, um, I tried to pick a very flattering screen grab. Um, <laughs> So it dawned on me, it was kind of interesting that in an age where we have problem with uh, violent crime and guns, there's so much like posters and you know sort of um, sort of elevating guns to being a cool heroic thing and in public spaces as well. Some people got very angry and thought I was sort of fighting against violent movies, which was not the case at all. It wasn't the case at all that I really was trying to do anything. But it became it became a project that that, that had a message about it. Uh, this is my favorite comment that I saw on the many forums and things that people <laughs> wrote about. Um, so, uh, so I think like the main thing is to use your imagination. That's like the that's the main raw material. When I go to an art fair, I like to cut out little card shapes, little objects, and bits of uh, paper strips, and take them around with me and see see what I can find. Um, I think they're a bit like jigsaw puzzles. Or something. You, you take something, and you're not quite sure where it will fit, but you hope it will fit somewhere. So I, I take these little pictures, um, which are, you know, are, are like a fun little, little exercise. Never quite sure what's going to happen. Um, and I, that's kind of how, how my practice has evolved now. So I do this a lot. I have uh, little eyeballs, little sticker eyeballs. I like to take those for a walk. So I don't know where I'm going to put them or what I'm going to photograph them against. But I know on a like, just walk from like, my home to the studio, I might find some like, spaces in which to put them. It's just like fun little, little setups, little creative games. They don't always work out so well. They're not always so amazing, but that's OK. It's all about sort of building up that progress. I tried to, uh, to create a fashion line <laughs> using two-dimensional pieces of cardboard. Um, so I create some Louis Vuitton handbags. I thought, where can you sell these things in New York? So I went to Chinatown. Um, I set up a little stall. Um, and uh, this girl offered me a dollar for two. <laughs> well, I was like, I have some work in museums and things. I don't want to undersell myself. So uh, that didn't go, about, didn't go down very well. And some of the people who actually do sell knockoff Hamburgs in Chinatown didn't take likely to me being there. Uh, context is important. I did a similar kind of gag um, a few years later. I saw, did anyone go to this, the Jeff Koons retrospective? He made this giant uh, Play Doh sculpture out of metal, and it took 20 years to develop. And I thought, I could do that in 20 seconds, <laughs> albeit on a much smaller scale. So um, I thought, where can I go in New York to sell pretend Jeff Koon sculptures? So um, I set up a little stool outside the Whitney, uh, <laughs> where the Jeff Koons retrospective is. That went a lot better, and people thought it was really funny. And um, I sold all of them. But I also learned another important lesson, which was the interaction with the people was an integral part of the work, the performance, the art. That, the engagement, the direct engagement, made it really good. It wasn't just me trying to sell something. It was all the funny conversations and the questions. <laughs> you know, are you Jeff Koons? I'm like, could be. Um, and then the actual like, crowning achievement of this little project was this photograph that I didn't even take, that someone bought one of my pieces and then queued up, went to the show and took the, the photo of the two pieces together, which I thought was great. I tried a similar thing at the end of last year. I don't know if you know this piece by um, uh, Yayo Katsama, but uh, she makes a beautiful installations that are all mirrored and glass, and people like to go there and photograph themselves in there. It's become a bit of an Instagrammy type thing. And there's these big, long queues outside uh, the galleries where people queue for hours to get five minutes in the room. 
And I thought that was a really curious thing. And I wondered you know, what the motivation was. I guess it's to, great, it's to, to take a nice photo. And I thought maybe if I built my own, <laughs> if I built my own little infinity box and took it to the queue, maybe people would, would rather take a photo inside my little selfie box. So I covered myself in dots to be on brand, like yay yeah, yoy. <laughs> Not many of the dots actually <laughs> made, it to, uh, made it to the gallery. But then I went and I, and I sort of was ch just chatting to people in the, in the queue, and uh, a lot of people took their photographs, peering into the box, which was good. It didn't dissuade anyone from actually going to see the exhibition, which is fine. But everyone really liked it, it was really fun. Even the gallery uh, staff enjoyed it. Um, Everyone was loving it, totally enjoying Infinity Box, but now it's, um, it's been confiscated. You, you can see it there in the corner. So everyone was enjoying it, and then suddenly I think they were someone buzzed down to the staff like, this is not a good thing. So, um, but yeah, I got it back, it was all fine. Uh, but again, I think it's like the idea of it is funny and like captured people's imaginations far more than like how well the box was made, which was you know, literally a box I found in a neighbor's uh, trash. So, um, so yeah, the craft wasn't so important more than the idea. Uh, hey, do you have a, a cell phone or a smartphone of some description? Does anyone, has you seen these things? One person has one, amazing. <laughs> They're incredible, it's amazing. It's like you've got a little studio in your pocket. You can do so much with these things. Um, so I started a little thing where I thought, I'm gonna try and make work for the phone, only using the phone. That was my like restriction. Um, so this was a few years ago, I joined Instagram, and I saw there was a lot of celebrities on Instagram, and I thought, what can I do? I, I'm gonna screen grab. So I screen grab a lot of celebrity pictures, and then I took a photo of myself, and the idea was I could only use the software, the tools within Instagram. So I took a photo of myself, and I used the little thing where you can like flip the image, and you can put two images next to each other, and I made that. And it looks like I'm, I'm sharing a snack with Miley Cyrus, and I thought, this is kind of fun. So I started to make a lot of these. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I've not f I could have photoshopped myself into celebrity images and things, but I don't think that was the point. The point was that I was just, <laughs> just putting two images next to each other. <laughs> He'd lost his budgie. Um, if you put two images next to each other, it can change, it can change the reading of the images quite uh, significantly. Here I'm teaching him, tr trying to teach him to read. <laughs> It's the only book he's read. Um, but it's kind of amazing. You can make these things. And again, this w became really popular online for a little while. And someone wrote on a forum, I know it's not real, but I'm still jealous. <laughs> and that's incredible. It only took five seconds to make. Um, so th and again, it's not about the crafts, it's about the idea. And I me started making these as little doodles, and I wasn't sure what, what they were going to become. And then I realized that they were kind of a little thing about how we're always trying to show off online and show that we're like hanging out with celebrities and like we're all really cool. That's the kind of front that we have on social media and stuff. Boy, it's actually, you're just a man alone <laughs> on your sofa in your underpants. Um, and so it became its own little thing. You can draw on, on your phone, um, which is great. You can take a picture of someone and then just using the tools, just using the tools on Snapchat or Instagram, you can draw on stuff, which is incredible. So you can take pictures and do stuff. And I found this really... <laughs> I found this really, like, uh, liberating. I didn't have to even be in my studio to make work. I could just do it anywhere. Uh, you know, again, in, on subway when I'm not up to anything else, you know. Um, so you can have a lot of fun with these things. Uh, and you can just see stuff. <laughs> see stuff that you see every day, and you can s you use your brain to sort of bend the, the world around you and make it something else. I saw this in, um, in Helsinki. So this is like a lighting shot with fancy lamps. And I just, uh, yeah. You, so everything around you be can become part of your material. Of, of stuff that you, you, know, you can play around with. And you can do it with video, this is incredible. So 
Um, you can, so the limitation here is you have to do the video first and then draw something on it, and you can't move the image. I call this static animation. I really love animation, but I don't have the patience to be an animator or to do it properly. So I like to do a lot of really like uh, lo-fi cheating animation uh, techniques. I'm going to just teach you some of them very, very quickly. This is a stick motion. The idea of this is you put something on a stick, and then you move it. Uh, this is slot motion. OK, similar kind of thing. Uh, slot motion is great. You can do a lot of, a lot of fun things with slot motion. Um, on your phones, you have time lapse, which is super cool. You can just set, set your camera up and leave it. So it's good to film something slow and then because it's going to play back quickly. So you know that's anything melting is great for that kind of thing. A stop motion, you can do that on your phones. All your phones can do this. Just take a picture, move something, take a picture, move something, and then play it back. And it, you know stuff comes alive. It's incredible. This is the sim absolute simplest. <laughs> this is hand motion. It's very very simple, very very easy to do. Uh, how are we doing for time? So anyway, st static. Static motion, I've got to hurry up a little bit. So uh, you just move the camera, move the camera, and uh, it, looks like, it looks like the thing is moving. Um. Oh, good. Oh, there we go. Anyway, it's very, very simple. So uh, you can go out and film anyone, anything. And it's like the stuff around us, it's the stuff you see every day can be repurposed, right? Um, add a shadow to make something look like it's above something. It's great. And if you can add a little narrative element to it, a little story, a little play between things, then like more the better, right? You know, then it's like the holy trinity of, of storytelling. Um, <laughs> just adding personality, adding, adding some sort of narrative is great. So this is just the ice cream truck, right? Um, you don't have to even go out. If you're a bit shy, you don't need to do it out and about in the streets. You can do it at home when you're watching TV. You can just literally film what you're seeing and add a little something to it. Uh, it's great fun. I like putting this stuff online, sharing it. I tried to make something just using the zoom of my camera. Ow. <laughs> so I didn't hit myself in the head. I just used the zoom function and then made a noise. And I put this online, and someone sent me this the next day. I've lost the name of the person that sent it to me, so I hope, I hope that person will get in touch, because I think it's an amazing video. Except, the more I've watched it, the less I think they're using the zoom function. <laughs> I think that little girl got hit in the head. But I love putting stuff online. So that's the fun thing about creativity. It's infectious, and, and you, you do something, and people can see what you do. So I like to do this a lot on my Instagram stories, which is to take a photograph of an object and push it out there and say, what do you see? And I give a few examples of what I see. Hey, this thing can be anything. And then people send me their versions back, which is often really inspiring and sometimes just a little disappointing. <laughs> um, so, you know, here's a lovely flower. I think it looks like some lips. And then people are like, look at this. It's an umbrella. It's Marilyn Monroe. It's a butt. Um, <laughs> so, but you never know. And that's uh, another great thing about engaging with people. You never really can predict what they're going to share. Uh, so just recently, this is the most recent stuff that I've done using my phone. Instagram made a selfie sticker. Uh, I don't know if you've explored the joys of that. But it means you can put your head on things. And if you add that to video, <laughs> then you can put your head on anything. Uh, it doesn't, uh, of course, have to be video. You can have, you know, it just makes grocery shopping more fun. It makes, it's like they sprinkle this kind of fun magic on lots of different things. I like to do it, of course, on the subway. <laughs> and again, I don't really know why I started doing it. I felt compelled to do it. I thought it'd be interesting to do. And then suddenly, before you know it, you are filming people all the time. They're on their phones, I'm on my phone, we're all on our phones. I have hundreds and hundreds of these videos, hundreds of them, hundreds of them. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know what's, uh, what I'm going to do with them, but they're kind of fun. I, sometimes I'm sat on the subway and someone will come with their stroller, so I'm eye to eye with a child, and I feel a little, <laughs> I feel a little bit guilty about uh, doing this one, but... Um, and I used a little bit of pink paper in my mouth to, to connect it to the, 
the pass is it pacifier? We'd call it a dummy in the UK. Anyway, this is my absolute favorite uh, face swap thing. This is my friend's dog. <laughs> Hello. So that's my little talk about things. So in summing up, allow your imagination to be your raw material. That's like the best raw material we all have access to. Uh, limitations are good. Just go with what you have. Ignore the idea of failure. You like set up these projects. You're not sure what's going to happen with them, where they're going to go. It's OK. You know, they might lead to something else. Um, I, hate the, I hate the thought of things being good or bad or working or not working. I don't think process is that important. People aren't engaging with the process. I don't think craft is that important. I mean, it is to a degree you want to present yourself well, but it's not the work. The work is, you know, ideas and stories. Those are things that people really engage with. Thank you very, very, very much.